The year is 1742, and Johannes van den Broeke is looking in agony as his only son is being burned to death after weeks of torture. Plundering, murdering. They are a scourge from the lands of nowadays Netherlands and Belgium. Known as the Devil's Riders, they raided peaceful villages and churches over a time span of nearly 70 years. Legend has it that they would ride on goats through the night, could see in the dark, and most of all, they would worship the Devil. Before every scourge, they would meet at the back of a church and pledge fealty to Satan by committing a blood oath. Many suspected Bokker riders have even confessed to worshipping the devil. They were sentenced to death. If you would have lived in the Netherlands in 1742, you would have trembled by the mere word devil's riders. But was there any claim to these occult riders of the devil? Or is it more legend than reality? They were a group of Dutch criminals that were active in the southern parts of the Netherlands in the 18th century. Some historians say they were thieves. Some say they were more of a Robin Hood type of group. And some historians believe they did not exist at all. What happened to the Devil's Riders is very similar to the witch trials in Europe. Fueled by superstition, a lot of crimes were attributed to the Devil's Riders for convenience, hatred, or personal motives. In a time span of 70 years, hundreds of people were convicted of being affiliated with the Devil's Riders. In the 18th century, people in the south of the Netherlands were poor, had suffered several bad harvests, and suffered from economical despair. The Devil's Riders may have been created as an easy scapegoat to attribute to helplessness felt by many that were robbed by one of their fellow town's members. But where does this group find their origins? Johan Arnold Daniels is the first to write about the Bokker Riders in his book in 1779. He became a priest at age 25 after studying in the city of Romont. In the night of the 20th of April in 1762, a large group of people entered a house in Wijnansrade. Some of the men, their faces blacken. Others have cloths tied over their faces. Speaking high German, one of them was clearly addressed as captain. The owner was forcefully pushed with his face against the ground. Every single resident of the house was beaten and abused. The only one that was spared was the maid. 1500 crawlers a sizable amount for a treasure, as they rode off into the night. But the owner had recognized one of the robbers by his voice. In court, he named a man named Andries Cornet, who lived in Heerle. A strange man, he proclaimed. Eleven years later, during the trials in 1773, 56 people were found guilty for this crime, and 16 of them found death by execution. Daniels was the son of a treasurer. He grew up in the same streets as many of the suspected Devil's Riders. But by the time he was writing about the Devil's Riders, the first wave trial was long on its way. In his book, he describes in detail how people were arrested and trialed for their alleged crimes. Over 120 suspects were arrested for only 10 crimes. One of the most notorious crimes of the Devil's Riders is the violent robbery of the Abbey of Valjeu. Sacking this religious place that thieves were amassed, they stole all valuables from the church and fled on horseback in the darkness of night. It has even been suspected that a priest has been involved in this crime but whom this was is never uncovered. Some say it was Lambertus Swinkels, and others say Johannes von Eyster. 
but burglary wasn't the only crime they committed. Witchcraft and devil worship were strictly prohibited by the church. These men would meet in the depth of night in the woods, sacrificing animals and committing satanic rituals. And this, while during that time the Enlightenment was spreading in Europe. A stark contrast with the trials that were soon to happen in the south of the Netherlands, filled with superstition. But most people were illiterate and lived in small communities. Rumor has it that Johan's son was part of this notorious group, and there were talks all over town of what he allegedly had done. Deadly if you would have been at the center of these gossips in the 18th century. And deadly they were for the son of Johan. After weeks of torture, he screamed his confession, I have renounced God and his mother Mary, and I am devoted to the devil. Until that moment, the judge was convinced that the devil's riders were nothing more than a group of robbers fueled by superstition. But now he believed it was a godless gang of thieves, and that's how they were branded. Was Johan's son innocent or a scoundrel? We will never know. Johan's son's punishment was severe. With over 100 of his fellow devil's riders, he was executed. Some of them were hanged, burned alive, and even quartered. On some occasions, people were dismembered while being alive, while others were shown mercy and were merely hanged. Gruesome nights followed for many, since thousands of people witnessed somebody they loved die in agony. Confessions created from torture with thumbscrews and waterboarding that would even make the hardest man confess. Were these men and women thieves? Or did the devil grab a hold of them? After the first wave, the highest form of authority in Belgium took control and ended the executions. Thanks for watching this first episode of a series of videos I intend to make about the Devil's Riders. Over 2500 books have been written about them, but I couldn't find one good video that tells the full story of this endlessly fascinating group of criminals. Next to this series I got some ideas about other videos, but if you have any ideas of what you would like to see in the future, be sure to leave a comment since I'll be keeping track of them at all times. So thanks again for watching, don't forget to subscribe and see you guys in a couple of weeks.